In 1807, a certain mathematician by the name of Joseph Foy submitted a paper, a research paper, to the Academy of Sciences in Paris. And in that paper, he talked about a mathematical approach in solving problems involving heat conduction. Now, at first sight, they, they conceive or they say that the paper you know, wasn't that good due to the lack of mathematical rigor. But little did they know that what he wrote in the paper would soon be developed into an area of mathematics called Fourier analysis. And that is the new model that I'm going to do. Now, Fourier analysis involves expanding certain functions or representing certain functions in an infinite series or in integrals of trigonometry functions. Now, if fx, well, let's just go dive right into it and, and not waste any time. If fx is integrable from okay, minus pi to pi, this is our first limit. Now, we have to start out with a basic Fourier series. You cannot jump into a, a very major one, but a big one is that, oh sorry, the, the small one or the simple one is that if the function is integral from minus pi to pi, the Fourier series, ladies and gentlemen, is this thing over here. Fourier series is going to be a naught plus uh, summation n equals to 1 to infinity of a n cosine n x plus b n sine nx. Okay, let's take a while and look at this. So, uh, Joseph Hoyle developed a way to write fx as the Fourier series as this thing over here. Now, obviously, a naught and a, a naught a n and b n are certain constants. Okay, we can see that this a n and b n is going to depend on, on the running variable n. Well, that's, that's fine because it's inside the summation. So, our objective, or at least we need to be motivated to find a way to represent this fx as this thing over here. The main motivation of Fourier analysis. And let's just you know do this right now. So our objective is that if we were to write fx in terms of this, we will want to find the variables, um, the constants a0, a n, and b n. Okay. Now what you see on the right side is basically integration formulas. Now I don't want to you know go much into the derivation because it's gonna take too long, but just look at this. Integrating cosine, cosine, s sine, sine, cosine, sine, integrating cosine, integrating sine is gonna be equal to zero. If the limits are from minus pi to pi, I hope you can see the relationship now because this one is going to be factored in over here. So all this is going to be equal to zero. Look at my web page, look at the formula results, you will, you know, you, it will equal to zero. The other one, if it's cosine squared and sine squared integrating from minus pi to pi is equal to pi. Briefly talking is that if we were to substitute the limits inside, integrate them, substitute the limits inside, we know certain things like you know sine n pi is equal to zero. That is how we get zero over here. That's just briefly speaking. Okay? So this is what we have. Our main objective find the the, the cost, um constants a0, an, and b. An. First thing, what we're gonna do is that we are gonna integrate, okay? Now, assume that function fx is equal to this. So our main motivation is, you know, if this were to equal function fx, we, let's find the, the constants, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is that we can integrate both sides with respect to x, taking the limits from minus pi to pi. fx dx is gonna equal integrate minus pi to pi of a0 and dx, okay? That's the second one, plus, now, we're going to integrate this summation sign. We will have to make the small assumption, the minor assumption that the integral sign and the summation sign can be interchangeable. So what does that mean? That means that I can put a summation n equals to 1 uh, to infinity because I'm going to integrate this, right? And then I, I will just integrate the individual components of the summation, okay? Which, which I hope you can see now, I write integrate a n, so I minus pi to pi of uh, cosine n x dx for the first one plus bn integrate minus pi to pi of sine nx dx okay nx now uh careful paying careful attention to the algebra an is dependent on n it's not dependent on x so when i integrate with respect to x okay i can bring out the a and out it's a you know it doesn't depend on x that is fine but what can I see from this? Well, using this uh, formulas over here, which is uh, integrate from minus pi to pi of cosine and sine, I will get zero. This one and this one equals zero. So basically, I'm left with this thing over here. I bring the a naught inside. I will see that a naught is going to be equal to one divided by two pi and integrate minus pi to pi of function fx. And was that easy enough? Well, that's quite easy. I hope you enjoyed it. So a naught is equal to this one over here. Very easy. So basically, I can now sub uh, substitute this one inside there. Okay, now that is fine. However, what about a n and b n? Okay, now taking it from this equation over here, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to multiply both sides by a certain cosine kx. Cosine kx. Multiply both sides of this equation by a certain cosine kx, where k is a positive integer. We need to set that condition, which is a fair statement. Uh, because of the summation, but and then after that, our plus okay, the summation 
of n equals to 1 uh, to infinity. Now, multiplying the cosine kx inside is not a problem. Why? Because, remember, this summation inside is going to change as n changes. If I pick a certain value of x, um, and I pick a certain value of k, this cosine kx is going to be a constant which does not depend on n. So I can bring in the cosine kx and multiply inside these two. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I have, multiplying the cosine kx inside. Now, you might be guessing why are there so many uh, spaces in between? Because just like how I integrated from minus pi to pi to find a naught, now I'm going to integrate from minus pi to pi with respect to x. Remember, with respect to x. So integrating minus pi to pi, dx, okay? Integrating this from minus pi to pi, dx. Integrating from minus pi to pi, dx. Assuming inter the integral sign can be interchanged, integrating minus pi uh, to dx. And there we go. So that is what we have. Okay, all is good. Now, a naught constant, bring it outside. Integrating this from minus pi to pi, cosine kx, using this formula over here is equal to zero. This one gets eliminated. Sine and cosine, you know, using this formula over here, okay, so this one also gets eliminated. Now, pay careful attention to this formula over here, this summation over here. Now, what can I see? I can see that n is going to run from 1 to infinity, meaning to say that this value is going to change, okay? Cosine nx is going to change. If I were to write it out like this, it's going to be 2, 3, at some point, it's going to go to k. Does that make sense? K is a positive integer. Let's just say K is maybe 6. So it's going to go 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At which point, this is going to be equal to, okay, so, um, this one is going to be equal to integrate minus pi to pi of A naught cosine squared Kx dx. I hope you can see that. You see, the running variable N is going to go, and then after that, K is K plus 1, K plus 2. Okay. What what is so special about this? Well, this if we integrate this, is integrating this one over here, we get pi. But if we integrate, okay, cosine nx, cosine kx, in which these two are not the same, they get they are equal to zero from this formula over here. So what I can tell you is that this whole summation is gonna collapse except for this term over here. Okay, I'll repeat again. N is gonna go from one to infinity. At any value of n in which these two are different, as you can see over here, n is does not equal to n, cosine times cosine is this, it's gonna be equal to zero. So this one is gonna collapse. Or all, all of this in which these two are not equal are gonna collapse equals to zero. And we are left with this one over here. This is not gonna collapse because integrating from minus pi to pi of cosine squared is gonna be equal to pi. So what I ultimately have is that this whole series is gonna collapse, right? And I will have a n is, oh sorry, now it's going to be a k because n is going to change to k. a k is going to be a k times pi. a k integrate this is equal to pi, which is this one over here. And now a k, and then I will substitute the dummy variable to make it a n. It's going to be equal to 1 divided by pi, integrate minus pi to pi of function f x cosine n x. There we go. Okay, um, a n is equal to this. I can substitute the a n over here. Okay, similarly, b n is going to equal to 1 divided by pi, uh, integrate minus pi to pi of function f x sine n x dx. It's the same thing. It's just that I would have to integrate sine squared. All of the other will collapse based on this formula I have right here. If m and n are this thing, these two are this thing, okay? So that is what we have, and if I were to you know, write it in full, a naught is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi, integrate minus pi to pi of f x uh, dx. And there, my friends, is the Fourier series of function f x. Now, there's only one flow, and I would like to talk about this, about a few interesting points about this thing. Okay, point number one. The a naught, a n, and b n are called the Fourier coefficients. Um, a common term. There's no surprise about that. A Fourier coefficients. Okay, and we need to notice that, and this is very careful if you do not want to make mistakes in the calculations. The Fourier coefficients has a certain cosine nx function inside. Okay, sine and a sine nx function inside. But when we put the Fourier coefficients into the Fourier series, the Fourier series itself also has a cosine nx. So be very mindful of that. When you find out nx, you're gonna get, if you integrate this, you're gonna get a certain function in terms of n. n is gonna change. But later, make sure that when you put it inside the Fourier series, you got the cosine nx inside there as well as the sine nx function. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, the Fourier series does not 
equal and I say again does not equal to the function fx in the video number three you will see a more elaboration but right now we are always saying the Fourier series of fx we are not saying fx is equal to this we are saying the Fourier series of fx which is this one over here okay and point number three function fx is defined from minus pi to pi be very mindful of that as subsequent lessons go on we're going to extend our function into the whole real life which is very interesting but right now Function fx defined from minus pi to pi means to say the Fourier series is only applicable from minus pi to pi. Okay? And lastly, the assumption that the integral sign and the summation sign are interchangeable, but that's uh, quite okay for now. Okay, so Fourier series of fx from uh, minus pi to pi is equal to this thing over here, where the Fourier coefficients are equal to this. And there we go. Let's look at some examples of Fourier series.